It's that time of year again, when we grab ourselves a mince pie, we pour a glass of mulled wine, and we kick back and take a look at some of the most intriguing, mind-blowing, and innovative pieces of street art that have appeared around the world in the last 12 months. My name's Doug, you're still watching Fifth Wall TV. How are you? It's been a minute. I can safely say that now we are into the second year of the COVID-19 outbreak. I'm very, very much over it at this point. Despite the fact that we're in our second year of international travel bans, lockdowns, we've still seen stellar works of graffiti, street art, muralism, and public art appear around the globe. We're gonna take a look at some of my favorites right here, right now. There's no denying that the COVID-19 outbreak hit us like a ton of bricks last year. And the streets responded with what seemed like a never-ending sea of masked murals. For a lot of us, the last year and a half has offered a period of reflection. It's been interesting to watch how the pandemic has started to feed into artists' work in more nuanced ways. And if not necessarily their work directly, maybe it's just my understanding and interpretation of their work. Some of the most poignant murals of the year have created a space for us to consider family, community, and of course this never-ending feeling of isolation. Though international travel has largely opened up throughout the year, it seems for many this is still an ongoing opportunity to localise their practice. And this for me is when street art is at its strongest. When the glitz and the glamour of all expenses paid trips around the world is replaced with a more considered effort to focus on storytelling. When I think about artwork that's centred around people and portraits, a lot of the newer generation of muralists come to mind. Bufido, Elsa Captavella, Joffrey Oliveras, Sebas Velasco, Helen Burr and Virginia Bersabi. This painterly approach to murals offers a really human touch to it, which is a sharp contrast to the kind of graphic, illustrative murals that we would have seen maybe 10 years ago. Equally though, muralism stalwarts like Tielmo Miel, Guido Van Helten and Fintan McGee are all still operating at the absolute top of their game at the moment. If you compare the work that artists like Sainer or Ariz are creating in the streets just now to the murals that they were doing just a few years ago, you can see this huge growth and kind of maturity in not just them as individual artists, but it feels like across a large part of the circuit. That said though, I just take a look at a mural like Unity by Pedro Padre or anything that Inti creates and I'm instantly reminded how much I really, really love that graphic illustrative approach. For me, murals that are centered around people are an invitation to reflect on our own experiences because there's automatically a connection there. But this can be done in a really interesting way through objects just as powerfully. When artists like Manolo Mesa or Adfuel paint plates and vases or ceramic tiles, often embedded within this imagery is the history and culture of communities. I'm always blown away by the finesse of the French artist Math Velvet. This really, really bright, bold colour palette always hits the mark for me. collaboration with the Italian public art project MAP, the Moroccan Spanish artist Mohamed Ilgacham created what is for me one of the standout murals of the year. Aesthetically speaking, the mural perfectly blends the texture and colour of the surrounding environment into the wall through what feels like a deeply personal insight into someone's home. What really separated this for me was the fact that the project itself became a bridge to invite local refugees into the community to help participate with the art activations that were going on around. So not only was this one of the most visually pleasing murals that I've seen this year, it had this weight of authenticity to it that really just made it all stand out. A powerful art project is underway in Dumbo. The goal is to bring the community together in the face of challenges that so many have been facing. 
The project is called Murals for the Movement and winds through Dumbo. Local black and Latinx artists are painting murals in response to social injustice. When I think about mural festivals, I'm not too sure if there's been this systemic shift in power, or maybe it's just some of the conversations that were at the forefront of public discourse last year are now just starting to manifest, but it does feel that steps are being made to create a wider network that feels more inclusive and sees a greater range of artists and producers coming in to take up space in the scene. For example, we've seen murals for the movement in New York and blackout murals in Detroit put black, indigenous and voices of colour to the front of curation and production. This approach feels particularly pertinent in areas that are predominantly made up of non-white residents. Now don't get me wrong, muralism as a movement still has a long way to go to better strike this balance of voices. But when I look at the number of street art productions and festivals that are appearing that are exclusively backed by real estate companies and property developers, it feels more important than ever to celebrate initiatives that encourage localised, independent ownership of the urban landscape. On a personal note, after six years of mouthing off about other people's productions, I finally threw my hat into the ring this year. Together with the producer Charlotte Pyatt, we created a mural project in Basildon, Essex called Art Towns. For each of the 10 activations, we partnered artists with local community organisations tackling issues such as the LGBTQIA community, dementia, the traveller community and climate action. For one of the murals, we brought in the artist Insa, who created an augmented reality piece that would come to life when you viewed it through an app on your phone. Talking about augmented reality, there's been no shortage of artists recently that have been ushering in this new era of art pushing the boundary of technology. Augmented murals by the artist Bon True Love sit right at the forefront of this dynamic. Now, I couldn't talk about the future of art without mentioning the big digital elephant in the room, the continued rise of NFTs. In the last year, this component of digital art has promised to champion a new generation of creators ready to shake up the art establishment. If I'm entirely honest with you, I haven't yet really connected with NFTs. I did a podcast with Beeple earlier in the year and even after that, I'm still not like completely blown away by it. I think it's because I kind of view it like Wall Street trading. It's like, if you've got chips in the game, then it's probably really exciting. As a spectator, it's not offered me a huge amount yet. That said, the rise in digital art is only a good thing. I'm 100% here for it. In the last year though, it has got me thinking about how we're going to view these more traditional forms of painting in the future. I wonder if there's going to be a point in history at which the idea of a static, unanimated, unprojected canvas just seems absolutely archaic or if these forms of tradition will outlive the impact of technology. Quite recently, one of the elders of the Armageddon, Mark Zuckerberg, used street art to give us an insight into his vision of what the future might look like. As we seemingly abandon all connection to the real physical world in favour of this increasingly virtual existence in the metaverse. Sorry, I'm running late, but you've got to see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around Soho hiding AR pieces for people to find. 3D street art? That's cool. Send that link over so we can all look at it. This is stunning. For me, though, this short clip really showcased the world void of any real creativity. A world in which colour and aesthetic continue to dominate over any real substance and engagement. And I can't help but feel that Mark Zuckerberg is already using street art to gentrify the metaverse. As a generation that are tearing down the injustices of the past and standing up to the old guard, it makes me wonder how ready we are to just assimilate into this corporate existence. A world in which the rules are determined by an entity with seemingly no accountability and a track record of inflaming division. The version of Facebook that exists today is tearing our societies apart and causing ethnic violence around the world. Ethnic violence, including Myanmar in 2018, when the military used Facebook to launch a genocide. For many of us around the world, the streets are an outlet where we challenge this kind of authority, where we share ideas and exchange information. This makes me think about some of the imagery I saw on the news earlier this year in Kabul, where the Taliban were going around the streets painting over murals, eradicating any depiction of women in the public. 
So with that in mind, I'd like to leave you with some more of my favourite pieces of artwork from around the world in 2021. I hope wherever you're watching from just now, you're taking care of yourself and those close to you. I'll be back with you guys at some point in the new year. Till then, my name's Doug. This was Fifth Wall TV. Yes. yes.